Right now there's no wind turbines in the water in North America. And so the, the work that's been done in Western Europe shows that one of the major effects of wind farms is to displace birds from the location of the wind farm. What we've been doing the last three years is trying to identify what we like to call hot spots of bird use. Those are the places you wouldn't want to put the wind farms. And so the satellite telemetry project is designed to look at specifically those movement patterns and movement corridors that the birds have. We had to decide which species to focus on. And we studied last year black scoters. This year, we decided to focus on common eider because it's the most common of the sea ducks around here. One of the criteria was we had to have something big enough to house a satellite transmitter. They're relatively large, and so you need something relatively big to, to hold it. The main field work for this project is to catch the birds to put the satellite transmitters in them. So to do that, we usually start about three o'clock in the morning, depends on where we're gonna go. We usually have a crew of four boats, um, and each boat has at least three people in it. Then we go out and we set up the mist nets, and these mist nets kind of look like a really thin badminton net, and these nets are unique because they're floating, and the birds can't see the net when they fly into it. And you set all this stuff up in the dark, you put a bunch of decoys around the nets to attract the birds in, and you hope that you've picked the right spot. If you have, then there's a lot of action pretty quick in the morning before the birds can actually see the nets particularly well. And then by, oh, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, the birds have found where they want to hang out for the day, and so the capture rates go down. And then we bring them back to land where they're banded and processed. So they have big legs, so for a size seven, it's, it'll spin, but it's the best you can do on them. You don't want to go any bigger? Any bigger, it gets it's stuck too on the big. Foot. Yeah. Then, in this case, for the eiders, we only put transmitters in the adult females. The females are the ones that have all the power. They pick the nest site. When they establish pair bonds in the winter months, the male that pair bonds with them is going to follow that female back to her nest site. So, keeping track of the females is a critical thing for population biologists. So, we keep all the adult females. There's a surgeon that spends the rest of the day, um, a USGS surgeon that uh, does all of our surgeries. These transmitters that weigh about 36 grams, they're surgically implanted into the birds. Because these are species that dive, they dive to about 30 meters deep. Um, you, we don't want to impact their flight abilities or their diving capabilities, so the way to do that is to surgically implant them. And by the end of the day, the birds are released. They're back out on the water, and at least with the common eiders, there's been a lot of success. They're still all hanging around. So imagine, you having a transmitter and we understand where you are every two or three days. And we do that throughout the year, right? Every two or three days. So one of the things we get is information about all the hangouts that that eider likes to be during winter in Rhode Island, okay? And we can relate that directly to what's there. So is it a rocky reef? Is it a sandy beach? What's the depth of the water? Um, how does that vary by weather conditions? So you really learn a lot about what we call habitat selection, so where birds like to hang out. <clears throat> and you can then extrapolate from that. Okay, if all of our 26 birds all use this particular kind of habitat, then we can say, okay, that's the places that they like to hang. Those are the places we should avoid in terms of, of, of wind farms.